with them, and I was, they lost more than I did, and I was with them for 25 years, and he would say to me, the only reason why I let you in here was because of Mr. Cohen and because of his money, and otherwise I wouldn't even look at you. I mean, oh, my God. In other words, you were nothing to him because it was only $18 million, and your father-in-law had so much more money that he was the big man. Oh, my God. Like, oh, it makes you want to strangle a guy like that, doesn't it? And you know what? You would want to because you would see that curtain he had that, that little arrogant look in his face, and he'd do that little smile, and I, I'd, I'd want to punch him in the face. And his wife was just so charming and the whole thing, and, you know, the whole thing was, you know, they used to have... Let, let's, let's deal. I want to deal with this another minute. John, did you... You grew up in New York, right? You're, you're in that milieu, correct? I grew up in Brooklyn, and I lived I live in New Jersey since I was 20. All right. What kind of guy was made off, in your opinion, as a, as a kid? What kind of boy would he have been? If we go back to when you were a, a junior high school, what kind of... Which kid was he? He was a, he would have been a real punk. He would have been a real conniver. He would have said, uh, "You do this, and uh, we would get in trouble." And he would he would be the one that would benefit by it. <laughs> and then he blame blame you for it. God. Now I understand Ruthie Madoff was quite a catch when she was young. She was pretty. She was blonde. Uh, how did he get her? He wasn't rich at the time. How did he get her? Well, you know, that, at that time he had a. He had to probably a little bit of money and, and probably do the families and stuff. I mean, did I like her? Yeah, I liked her. She was very charming. Here, I never trusted. And the kids, I always think they knew also. I think, oh. took, I think he took the rap for them and said, you know what? You, I'm going to say you knew nothing. I'm old already. I'm going to jail. That's what I... Oh, but now one of them committed suicide and one got died of cancer, right? Right. The one that committed suicide was a... A really nice young man, and I just think he, he was so upset with what his father did. That time. Unbelievable, the sins of the fathers. What a call this is that it's impossible to tell people what they're listening to unless they understand it from the get-go. And I want to thank you for having the, this, the fortitude to even talk about your loss of $18 million to such an evil human being as Bernie Madoff. I'll be right back. I would not be here tonight. I would not be running for president of the United States if I did not have very strong religious and spiritual uh, <laughs> feelings. Uh, I believe that um, as a human All being, right. the pain yeah. that All right. one now he's religious. You know, Bernie Sanders is eerily like Bernie Madoff. That's why I'm doing that. I realize what's going on here in my thinking. We have a Bernie Madoff running for the president. His name is uh, Bernie Sanders. Not two months ago, he said he's not, he, he, what did he say, he's not religious. Something like, he's not a practicing Jew. I don't know what practicing means. Either you're Jewish or you, what, do you practice being Jewish? You go out and look for a burning bush? You bring a lighter fluid and a match and throw it on a bush, and if it catches fire, then you're not a practicing Jew, you're actually Jewish? Now he's telling us he has deep religious beliefs. What are they, Bernie? What are you, a Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Bo Hindu, Buddhist, Zoroastrian, Z Azini? Are you ravioli? What are you? Aziti, ravioli? I don't know what the man is. Now he has deep religious beliefs because he was asked about it. So he's the Bernie Madoff of the campaign, a, a twin, an emotional twin to Bernie Madoff. He's running the biggest Ponzi scheme in American political history, making people believe he's, he's an honest man because he's poor. You know, not every poor man is honest. They're stupid. Some poor men are just dumb or lazy. See, you're confusing poverty with, with, uh, with uh, integrity. I know some rich people are very good people. I know some poor people are as dumb as dirt. Unbelievable to me how people have to be, everything has to be explained to them. I guess this is what the, the beauty of a show is. That if you have wisdom, you've been around long enough, you can actually explain to people what's really going on and what's really happening. But to be honest with you, to not have to talk about the campaign, it's a thrill for me. I am and I'm not in a certain way, you know. Look at the calls we're getting. Here's another beauty. You, you and I on line six from WJR, fire away a minute or less. What's on your mind? I have very little sympathy for those people who lost their money through bringing me off because every one of them thought they were getting something for nothing. They were going to get 20% on their money while us schlubs could only get, what, 2% in a bank? They knew there was something wrong with that whole scheme, and they just wanted, they wanted it good. They wanted to get in on the goods while the getting was good. 
There's well, you the, well, your attitude is not atypical of of many millions of people. I I, I assume you're a Bernie Sanders voter. Oh no! Oh God, no! No, I'm I'm more mature than that. <laughs> so, which of the candidates from column A and column B appealed to you? With given your attitude and, and antipathy towards the investor class, who would you vote for? I have no preference right now. They all disgust me equally. <laughs> You're a real cynic. <laughs> which which eye do you want poked out? You know, when I opened the show today, I said much much ado about nothing. Choose one from column A between a commie and a criminal, or one from column B between a showman, a shaman, and a shanda. Did you hear that opening? Oh, yeah. Probably not, but thank you for the call. No one heard it. My best line of the day, though, which won't be quoted by anyone, but you should be glad you're listening, is the New Hampshire motto of the Democrat Party is live free and get high. I think that's funny. New Hampshire has a lot of poor people in it, by the way. You don't know the history of New Hampshire. It's a tax-free state, number one. That tells you an awful lot about it. Number two, if you know anything about connections between it and pizzerias in New York, you'll know where I'm coming from. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. It is the uh, Savage Nation. You know, there's a story I want to talk about in the middle of all the other stuff we're talking about. The Madoff thing, the big short, the housing crisis, uh, Bernie Sanders being the Madoff of the election. Same con same type, same type, a twin, a twin. If I met these two in a living room, I couldn't tell a difference between the two of them, between Madoff and, uh, and, and Sanders. The same type, the big smile. The engaging grin, uh, chutzpah on them that you can't believe. You know, using aggression to bring people down and back them off. You know, winning through intimidation. They must have. They wrote the book. Bernie Madoff and Bernie Sanders didn't read the book. They wrote the book, winning through intimidation. So this story is in the middle of it all. Man sucked out of plane might have been suicide bomber. The the cell phone video of it is frightening. If you see the hole in the plane. They found residue now. He used a wheelchair to circumvent security measures in Mogadishu and before detonating the device, and, and it didn't bring the plane down, according to the Wall Street Journal. His flaming body landed near the town of Balad, whatever that means. No one knows what that is. So the guy they think was a suicide bomber, the bomb went off. It didn't blow the plane up, thank God. It blew a hole in the plane. He got sucked out. They found this flaming body on the ground, and uh, they found residue. I know there's not no more to the story than that. You see the people running from the front of the plane. Some of them are smart enough to run right away when the hole appears. The others sit like schmendricks. A bomb goes off. A guy gets sucked out. The others sitting like schmucks till they're told to get to run away from the hole. The smart ones ran to the back of the plane. You see them high footing it. The others sit there like a schmendrick waiting for the stewardess to tell them what to do. You know, don't leave your seat. Sit there till you get sucked out. <sighs> Whoa. So now let's go back to regular program. I want to play a trailer from the movie The Big Short, which is the story of the uh, real estate collapse of 2007, the CDOs that I've been talking about, because they're back. Let's listen to uh, clip one. Banks have conditioned us to trust them. What have we got from that? 25% interest rates on credit cards. They have screwed us on student loans that we can never get out from under. When the banks committed the greatest fraud in U.S. history... <laughs> No one is paying attention. It's unbelievable. Or outsiders risked it all to take them down. We are going to make the big banks hurt. How can the banks let this happen? It's fueled by stupidity. But that's not stupidity, that's fraud. Tell me the difference between stupid and illegal and I'll have my wife's brother arrested. <laughs> banks got greedy and we can profit off of their stupidity. Do you have any idea what you're up against? Rated R. I don't know why it's rated R. That's stupid. I mean, there's no, no, there's no women in it. There's not one love scene, nothing. I mean, they would have saved the movie with one love scene. I don't know how they could have worked it in, but it was, it was in some ways very boring, the big short. But it's worth seeing if you're interested in how they brought down the housing market and who made money on it. They didn't really name all the people involved who made billions, by the way. I was waiting for the real names of the real Ghanaf's gangsters. They didn't really name them. And they didn't name the head of the SEC, who should be in prison, in my opinion. 
And uh, yeah, but nevertheless, it does a good job as a melodrama, The Big Short. I think that uh, Christian Bale is great as Michael Burry, who invented the CDO, the credit default swaps. I like Peter Epstein as Paul Baum. I like, uh, well, I like some of the actors, Ryan Gosling as Jared Vanette. And uh, I think you'd enjoy the movie if you're interested, but it's not easy to watch because it's a very heavy mathematical plot, and they have to keep explaining it in the third person. They pop out of the screen and say, that's why I did this, because they knew the average audience was not going to follow it. I'm pretty good on statistics. At some point, I went to, it's like, what are they talking about? See, I'm not good at high finance. I'm very good at low finance. I was always the kind of kid I would work in a, in a, in a luncheonette. I'd make $9 or something for cleaning dishes. And then I would go home, do homework late, go to school. And, on the, and I put money in the bank. I liked a little bank account. That's how I was. I was raised to save money. I come from lower middle class background, immigrant family. And they were not they were not that smart. They didn't know high finance. It doesn't mean they would had great virtue for not knowing it. There's some very virtuous, very wealthy people, by the way, <laughs> that I've met in my life. But uh you either you have a head for high finance or you don't. I don't. You understand that? That there are people who have a mind for this kind of thing? They're not all crooks. The world runs off finance. I never had a mind for finance. It's an amazing field. I don't understand it. Uh, I've worked very hard and I've saved money. I've made some small investments in real estate in my life and I've done okay. But the thing is this, I couldn't understand the whole movie, but it's worth watching. I was sitting with a woman who was the CFO of a multi-billion dollar company and she enjoyed the first hour. Then I saw she was going blank on it. It was so complicated. So why am I talking about it? Why? Because the fiduciary instrument called the credit default swap or CDO that was invented at the time by the man who came up with the scam, the doctor who invented the whole idea, is now back. They're called BTOs, Bespoke Tranche Opportunities. So what I'm trying to say to you is, you know, what goes around, comes around, is coming around again. So it's adapted from a book called The Big Short, Inside the Doomsday Machine, and it traces the roots of the global market collapse through the eyes of those who saw it coming, and figured out ways to profit from it. And first out of the gate was Michael Burry, Dr. Michael Burry, played by Christian Bale, a stock-picking shaman with a glass eye and an utter lack of social graces, who's able to crunch numbers while running around his office barefoot and blaming, and, and, uh, and blaming every, no, bla running around his office barefoot, right? He's sort of a hippie, a hippie doctor. And how does it uh, happen? This doctor goes through the thousands of individual mor mortgages at the time that made up the securities that underwrote so much of the banking industry. And while bankers thought that they were solid, that no one ever defaults on a mortgage, Dr. Burry realized that a dangerous number of subprime home loans were on the verge of going south, and he decided to plug more than a billion dollars of investors' money into credit default swaps. And so what he did effectively was bet against the housing market. He goes to investment banks such as Goldman and I believe uh, uh, a German bank whose name I forget right now. I don't remember all the banks. And they think he's nuts. They say, well, how are you going to bet it against it? There's no such way to do it. So he comes up with a thing called a credit default swap. He invents it. And they say, sure, we'll take your money because they feel that mortgages were never are going to go like collapse because people pay their mortgages. He had studied the individual mortgages and saw that people in 05 were already bailing. They couldn't make payments. You following me, what, what I'm saying to you? So anyway, it's a fantastic story. And there's some great actors like uh, Steve Carell playing a fictionally named char fictional character who's a self-hating hedge funder uh, who blows up at the slightest uh, turn of events. He's good at it. But you need a head for business, and you need to be an investor, I think, to really enjoy it. The movie's not going to make any big money. It'll win awards. And, you know, in, who's in it? Brad Pitt plays a, a role in it. Terrible role. He's not believable in it at all. I think he took it just to attack big business, which is, of course, typical of Brad Pitt. All right, so that's the, the background to the show. We were avoiding the minute-to-minute, the, 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 uh, the minute, second-to-second uh, Trump thing and the Sanders and the Cruz and the schmooze. Because as far as I'm concerned, Cruz is a snooze. And I'm not going to do it. The whole thing is a snooze. I can't take it. And Sanders is the Bernie Madoff of the election. Identical, a twin. 
Ask anyone who knows what I'm talking about who knows Madoff. Sanders is Madoff. And I have to play that clip again. They, 